Okay, so I just finished recording my first video, so before you start watching this one, please watch the part one first, because that goes a bit more in the background of Lake Okeechobee, and knowing that, you know, this is a natural lake, by no means is this a man-made one, but several alterations have happened to it since then. So as promised, I wanted to go over what some of the issues are that Lake Okeechobee faces. So for one, you know, as I've mentioned before in several different videos regarding uh, conservation, is a lot of Floridians, they really love to use their uh, herbicides and pesticides. And the issue is, you know, when you use too much of that, when you use more than you need to for whatever particular property you have, those nutrients have a way of basically leaching into the waterways. And so these nutrients that I speak of, they're primarily nitrates and phosphates. Now, usually when you're working more with fresh water, you're going to see a bit more of the phosphate. So that being said, since there, you know, Lake Okeechobee is one large reservoir for our waterways in this area, those leached nutrients make their way here. And so, that being said, when there's an abundance of nutrient pollution that gives rise to a kinobacteria bloom, which gives that red-blue coloration in the water. Now, kinobacteria is not the same thing as red tide. Unlike kinobacteria, that's found more prevalently in freshwater. Whereas red tide, for example, is more of a saltwater type of bloom. So there is indeed a difference. So that's, you know, for the longest time, especially since this past decade, kinobacteria blooms have been a huge issue down here. And it, you know, the those blooms eventually make their way into the Caloosahatchee River. So it's, it's essentially one big cascade. You know, it's one thing after the other. It's like a domino effect. Now, on top of that, of these kinobacteria blooms, unfortunately, Lake Okeechobee faces some invasive plants as well as even wildlife too you know like for instance uh, tilapia that that's a common one it's a common invasive fish in this area because tilapia is originally from i believe parts of africa and it was most likely introduced by exotic trade some of our grackles man they're really making their presence known <laughs> Now, another particular invasive species found here in Lake Okeechobee is something known as water hyacinth. Now, when I say water hyacinth, it's a bit, it's a bit similar to, say, water lilies, but there is a difference. Water hyacinth was actually originally from South America. Same thing, it was mostly introduced for most likely ornamental reason. That's how most invasive species make their way into an area. Now, as opposed to a water lily that has uh, white petals or yellow, water hyacinth has purple petals. And the water hyacinth, they can actually form an extensive network of roots. So, in a sense, they're a bit rhizomatic. So, since they are a water-floating plant, 
what happens is, since there's no other uh, native vegetation that really keeps them in check, they just have that ability to reproduce rapidly. And they can actually double their population within a matter of two weeks. So that that's, that's very alarming. That's like an exponential rate. And you, you, you have two weeks and then you add another two weeks and so on and so forth. That becomes a major problem. So, and what happens when water hyacinth becomes more prevalent, it basically shades out the water. You know, there's no opportunity for sunlight to pass through. And thus, it prevents more, uh, more of the freshwater algae from developing, thus beginning the food chain. So it, like I said, it's like a trophic cascade at that point. But uh, that being said, there is indeed good news for a solution to that type of problem. There's a known company that is called Agua Culture. This is uh, a company that a friend of mine, Garrett Stewart, has mentioned before. Uh, Agriculture, they are, you know, essentially providing a solution. So they use a particular machine that's called a green mock. And in a sense, it kind of acts like a uh, conveyor belt. So what it does is it has this ability to, you know, float among the water. And it can actually collect the water hyacinth. And it, you know, they grind it up with water. And it turns it into like a slushy or more like a sludge type of texture. And once they have that particular sludge, they can actually use it as a fertilizer. So, essentially... When they use that as a fertilizer, they use it in fields, you know, like agricultural fields and ranches to provide, you know, production of new food. So, in a sense, you know, it's, it's providing two different solutions at the same time. One, it's reducing fertilizer use, thus preventing more bacteria blooms from occurring and two it's also yeah it's also removing the volume of invasive plants found in the lake now fortunately it's a little further away from the water so How do I want to word this? So basically, for a particular field, you know, they they have to look for the specific uh, capacity for how much fertilizer can be used. That way, there isn't any more fertilizer being used than what there has to be. So when that is applied, this. Uh, you know, the nutrients coming from the water hyacinth won't leach their way into this water. And rest assured, it won't provide a next generation for water hyacinth to occur. So, a couple of people who have participated in this type of project include Mike Elfenbein, as well as uh, Brad Fares. He's actually the rancher who has provided some of his land to allow this project to be possible. And what the most amazing part is, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is actually in support of it too. So it's, it's finally an example of what it means to provide a solution as well as conservation. And some of those individuals who I just mentioned, I really hope I can meet them one day. That would be very nice. Yeah. Because it would be really cool to actually see it in action, too. 
So, all right, you guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Journey on a journey is outwards. And I'll let you guys enjoy the view for a moment. All right. Definitely come out here if you can. Take care, you guys. See ya.